Hello, Simsters. Let me know when you can hear me. And let me know if I need to crank the volume like I did yesterday. That was pretty funny when I blasted everyone's ears out. <laughs> Sarah can heal me, hear me. Really? The volume is no good? Stupid thing. How about now? That's as good as it gets. So welcome, Simsters, to the final night of the year. Year 52, about to be in the books, and then we have a long break, and then the beginning of year 53. Now, some housekeeping notes. For the first time ever, we are... Um, too many texts. Too many texts. Um, <laughs> we are letting you guys breed mares during the long break, which means that normally foals would have been due next Friday, but we ran some tests to make sure it wasn't going to break anything, <laughs> which by the way, we ran like really moderate tests, which didn't like things could still break, but hopefully they don't. Um, and instead foals will be due two weeks from now, two weeks from today at noon Pacific three Eastern and then uh, the year will change over and races will open that Monday, which is Memorial Day, May 27th. I have three things on my calendar that day. It's Memorial Day, there's no school, and year 53 races open. So, there's that. Secondly, um, Sim 8.0 is not coming this year it comes in the fall so it will be um after year 53 between year 53 and year 54 is when we will unveil those new features uh which we're gonna get started on at some point yeah i've been putting off the admin for weeks i kept saying i can't do anything till after derby i can't do anything till after derby derby is making me nuts and i really was drowning with derby especially on the day when it rained and i needed a boat to get back to my car um so now it's time to actually do that so any last minute ideas and suggestions before we get working, please post them in that Sim 8.0 thread. No, we are not getting a new race viewer because no, we do not have an extra $10,000 laying around or 12,000 or 15 or whatever it costs the first time. So it won't be that, but one day, one day. So we have 14 races tonight, all the older horses. You may remember the excitement of last night uh, where steward breads dominated on the card. I think it ended up being eight steward breads and four home breads or other people breads, I think was the final tally. JR can tell us. Uh, we had lots of time for contests last night. We do have lots more contests tonight. Keep in mind, they were generously donated by the lovely Chris Bobby, one of the great people you will ever meet in your life. Well, as far as I know, none of us have met her, but talk to online. That's, yeah. Now, I had a dilemma because I don't have the kids tonight. There is no movie on, and and it's a very rare thing when I don't have the kids right now. So so I was like, I think I'm going to go see Avengers Endgame on Saturday, which I did see opening night, but I saw it in the front row, so there was like a whole bunch of noses. That's pretty much what I saw, and and yeah, it was a whole thing. So I was looking at movies tomorrow, and then I realized that there's one playing literally 100 yards from my front door. I can just walk across the street. There's a theater, and they had a seat in the middle towards the back at 8.30. Usually I sit around after the Stewards Cup, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, breed all the mares. Tell me who's retiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't have mares to breed, so guess what? As soon as the broadcast is over, I'm out, and I'm going to go do some self-care, which may or may not be self-care considering how sick I was yesterday and how, you know, I probably should have just gone to bed, but I stayed up two extra hours writing and complaining about how I should be in bed. And then I stood out in the rain all day today. I'm really good at self-care. Anyway. <sighs> Let's get started, shall we? Nine minutes to post for the first race of the day, which is the Stewards Cup Turf Sprint. Five for a long race on the grass for three-year-olds and up, worth $2 million. Um, I do want to do one last note. If you guys participated in the um, Stewards Cup uh, pick-all 
Thursday and Friday. Um, a couple people moved on or got entered in for today's raffle. Um, we're going to try and do it really quickly after the last race so that we will know who is the person that has Slick Rock as soon as the races are over. Um, so that'll be exciting, right? Yes? Yes? Okay. So stick around for that. But then after that, I'm so out of here. Okay. Number one in the Stewart's Cup Turf Sprint is Thunder Horse. And this is, in my opinion, one of the great turf sprinters of all time. I asked Joseph DePaulo about it in the edge, and he said he has a lot to prove before we can call him that. Last year, this guy won the Stewart's Cup. This year, he won the Chimborazo as a three-year-old. He probably has at least one more year on the track, if not two. Um, he needs to win this race and then the Dubai race uh, and the Pegasus, yeah, to really be considered like the greatest of all time. But he's only lost once, and that one loss was to a horse named Gentle Soul, who is not in here, I don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe. Scrolling really fast, though. Don't believe. No, he's not in here. Um, can anybody beat this horse? We will have to see. Number two, Jack of All Trades for Xander Zone. This is a $2 million purchase by Jacking Around. A seven-year-old horse who has won 15 of 43 starts. Uh, I don't math so good, so 30... Hold on, I'm about to choke. Hold on. I'm fine. <coughs> uh, so this guy's been on the board in 33 of 43 starts, which is insane. That's, like, so good. $1.2 million earned, coming off of three straight third-place finishes, including in two grade ones. Number three is Formulate for Andrea Bocamp. This is a homebred son of composer, 6 for 20 lifetime, has been on the board in 16 starts, coming off of a second-place effort in the Miami Turf Sprint behind a horse who is not in there, in here, I mean. Um, he has faced several of today's rivals, being stars, Jack of All Trades, Coco Liche, Terminal City, um... His last victory was three back in the Aqua Stakes. Number four, As Loki Ascends. Doug Como owns this horse, a six-year-old son of As Loki Falls, 14 for 34 lifetime. This guy uh, ran in the Chimborazo last out. He finished third. He kind of ran the same way all around. Um, he was only beaten, he was beaten less than two lengths for the win, so he definitely belongs. Earlier this year, he was second in the Pegasus, he was fourth in the Desert, and last year in this race, he was fifth, so he's always knocking on the door. And number five, Lord of the Moon for Carl Smythe. This is a homebred three-year-old who is seven for 13 lifetime, coming off of a win in the Group 1 Prix Longchamp in France. Um, before that, he won the great Group 1 uh, Autod Stakes. Last year, he was third in the two-year-old version of this race behind Thunder Horse. Number six, the Black Seas for Dusty Clatt. This is a homebred son of the Black Glove. He's won his last two starts, and he is seven for 15 lifetime. Uh, I don't believe he has ever been worse than third, which is pretty impressive. Highest lifetime speed figure is an 89. I could use a tissue. Number seven, Movie Magic for Gigi Go Faster. This is son of Cinematic, who costs $3.5 million. 11 for 20 lifetime with seven second place finishes. So this horse has only been worse than second twice in his entire career. Um, he finished second, beaten less than two lengths in the Chimborazo behind Thunder Horse. So he will be looking to make amends on that today. Before that, he had won three in a row, including the Raid 1 Silver Sword. Um, he was kind of more of an allowance horse in the last couple years as a two and three year old, but he's really blossomed this year at four. Number eight, Being Stars for Nikki Everdeen. This is a six-year-old son of Being Ridiculous. He is 12 for 27 lifetime. Gotta love all these old, cool horses that are in this race this year. Coming off of two straight group three wins, um, he's actually won five of his last six races. Oh, wait, maybe make that six of his last seven, because math is hard. And uh, so he's clearly in form right now. I actually really like this horse, and I'm excited to breed to him if he happens to retire making sure no one is talking to me in the chat seems like everything's doing okay okay cool number nine is somewhere to be by by ronnie d owned by ronnie d this is a three-year-old son of mr gray he cost a few dollars over a million five for nine lifetime he's only got two hundred and eighty thousand in earnings but he does have a 90 speed figure to his credit 
That was last year as a two-year-old. He was ninth in the two-year-old version of this race last year. Since then, he has won two stakes, including the Arcadia Dash last out. Number 10 is Red Balloon, who I do believe is making his final career start tonight for Glenn Larson. This is a four-year-old son of Aero Velocity. He is 12 for 18 lifetime with five second-place finishes. The worst finish of his career came in the Chimborazo last out, where he was fourth behind Thunder Horse Movie Magic as Loki Ascends. Uh, this guy's pretty special. He's earned $4.5 million. Uh, he was second in this race last year by a nose <laughs> behind being stars who I didn't mention was the defending champion in here. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Uh, this guy just gives his all every time he's been special. It's a little concerning that he ran, um, fourth in that big race. He did win two grade ones before that, but I think they were sponsored. Um, how good is he now as a four-year-old versus as a two and three-year-old? remains to be seen. Number 11 is Coco Liche for Rafa Usaz. This guy was riding a crazy winning streak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a row, including the grade one South Africa Sprint Championship. But last out, he finished third in the pre-long shot. 19 for 30 lifetime and has only been worse than third once or twice because math. Definitely going to need more liquid. Number 12, Terminal City for Nikki Everdeen. This is a five-year-old son of Almighty Pit. Um, I think this horse won this race two years ago, maybe. Let's look. Pretty sure, though. Do, 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 do. Yeah, year 50. This was your winner. Uh, he upset Kid Galahad and Cat Named Boots that day. So now he's back. And Terminal City is coming off of a second place effort behind the Little Fictions and the Patientville Stakes. Little Fictions not in this race, um, which is interesting. Why Why is that a thing? Where did this horse go? Oh, because he retired and has babies. All right. That's legit, I guess. Um, this guy did win the grade one Oceanside Dash 2 back. Highest lifetime speed figure is a 93. And rounding out the field is number 13, Boom Shakalaka for Stormy Peak. This is a seven-year-old. 13 for 38 lifetime, has won three in a row this year, and was fifth last out in that grade one. And I'm going to cough again, so let me get some water. Get your bets in. It is time for the Stewards Cup Turf Sprint. A field of 13 set to go five furlongs. Betting is now closed. And the pool closes at $26,700. They're off in the Stewards Cup turf sprint. Boom shakalaka from the outside stumbled, as did Terminal City, but the rest were away well. It is Movie Magic from Midpack who spurts out to the lead, joined by Coco Liche, and then comes Thunder Horse on the rail, Jack of All Trades and Red Balloon. The Black Seas in Terminal City, Boom Shakalaka, and As Loki Ascends being stars formulate Lord of the Moon, and Somewhere to Be is your early trailer. So it is Movie Magic who leads them by a length and some. Coco Liche tracking that one with Thunder Horse sitting third, then Jack of All Trades. Red Balloon is niggled along with Terminal City and the Black Seas. Boom Shakalaka and As Loki Ascends. Defending champion being stars and they're swinging into the stretch. And Movie Magic, he leads by two. He's had it his own way today. Thunder Horse is up in the second, passing Coco Liche and here comes Red Balloon. He is fourth and now he's third. Jack of All Trades, Terminal City, Lord of the Moon and As Loki Ascends, but it's still Movie Magic 
Thunder Horse needs to get going. Red Balloon collars him and passes. Red Balloon the danger, then Coco Liche. It is Movie Magic, Red Balloon, and Thunder Horse, but it's going to be Movie Magic to hold on to upset Red Balloon and Thunder Horse. Coco Liche was fourth, Terminal City fifth, then Jack of All Trades. The official winner is Movie Magic. He's a four-year-old chestnut colt by Cinematic out of Chrome tipped by Chrome Twin Moon. He was bred by the steward and is owned by Gigi Go Faster. This is his 12th win in 21 starts. I don't know if he's retiring. I bet I could find out real quickly, though. If I load the correct page. Do, 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 do. Is she in here? Oh, she isn't here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay, next up, we have the second race of the day, the Philly and Mare Dirt Mile. Eight minutes to post. We have a field of seven. On the rail is number one, Time Heist, a homebred for Nina Olsen. I do believe Time Heist is finally making her last start. This is a daughter of All of Time, who is coming off of a second place finish in the Marvel Stakes. Uh, last year, she took on the boys in this division and finished third. She has earned $3.5 million. She's a good girl. If she was a dog, we'd be like, you're a good girl. This year alone, she finished second in the Pegasus, third in the Desert Mile, all against boys, even though she's an older mare. So, And she won the Marvel last year, so good on her. Number two, Chrome White Socks for Xander Zone. This is a $2.8 million purchase by California Chrome. That's all good things should be. Two back, she won the King Kamehameha Jewel, which is a grade one. She was second in the Seattle Distaff. Uh, last year in this race, she finished fifth, 12 for 19 lifetime, and a $1.1 million earner. Number three is Flame Kissed, another of those cool old mares who I think is finally going to retire. Laura Ferguson, homebred, uh, she loves this one. This filly has earned 2.6 million, I guess Mayor has earned 2.6 million. Coming off of a victory in the Louisiana Champions Distaff, she was second in the King Kamehameha. Last year, she finished third in this race, beaten a half and a head. Number four, Inspired Courage. This is a daughter of Doctor Who, who costs $1.6 million. Matt Feldman is the owner, and this filly has actually been very well placed. 10 for 11 lifetime with a second place finish. That second place did come in the Stewards Cup last year behind Zendaya. She has never lost otherwise. She doesn't run in the best races in the world. Um, she ran in the Alamo Oaks, the Uruguay Oaks, the Metropolitan Cup, which is a grade three. But she is well placed, and he is definitely working on passing that $1.6 million purchase price. Oh, goody, there is tissues here. Okay, apparently I'm not as better as I thought. Number five is Umbra Snow for Danny Derby. A $6 million purchase by All of Time. Nine for 16 lifetime with $1.5 million earned. This filly did win one of these Stewards Cup races a few years ago. Last year she was fourth, beaten, what, a length for the win? Since then she's won the American Baby, she's won the Egg Drop Stakes, and she's coming off of a victory in the Broken Hero. Number six is Zendaya, who won the Stewards Cup debutante last year for Randall Johnson, a $750,000 purchase who's actually surpassed that purchase price. She's coming off two straight graded stakes wins. Uh, she did win the grade one Long Island Oaks back in week five. Her lone loss this year came to Chrome White Sox in the Long Island Mi Ladies Mile, and that was the lone loss of her career. Number seven in rounding out the field is Little Moonlight. Erica Olsen owns this one. This is a steward bred by Light of the Moon. Seven for 17 lifetime, coming off of a victory in the Palaces of Sand Stakes. Before that was second behind, behind Time Heist in the Elusive by Design. She was ninth in this race last year. Can she step up from that performance? And that is your field. Get your bets in because I'm not calling it with $2,000 in the betting pool.
Time for a contest. It's a contest. It's a contest. Strongly recommend that you have the Sim Museum open for contest questions because last night I was just reading things verbatim from there. So, make it happen. This is for 15,000 game points. Name the one horse that Brianna McKenzie bred that won the turf sprint. Nini, Nini Hunter back from an extended layoff. In one year, we get back Paul Sellers, Eric Malbone, Susie Rydell, and Nene Hunter. It's very exciting. Who else can we bring back from the brink of extermination? Two minutes to post. How cool are the old mares in here, Time Heist and Flame Kissed? They both, like, I would say in normal stables, but in stables that aren't... I'm surprised Nini's horse is still... Or Nina's horse is still running, sorry. Uh, but Laura, why is that horse still running? Like, <laughs> you guys could have babies. Time Heist won a Stewards Cup in year 49. Babies. Watch them both run next year just to prove that I'm wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. All right, it is post time. Well, let's check. All right, betting pool is better than it was. <laughs> $27,800 in the pool. For fillies and mares going a mile on the dirt for $1.5 million. Sir, if you chew a hole in my vacuum cord, I will beat you. That's more like it. They're in the gate. They're off in the Philly and Mare Dirt Mile, and it was a perfect start for all seven runners. Umbra Snow wants the lead, and she goes out chased by Inspired Courage, and then comes Zendaya. Time heist along the rail and flame kissed, then Chrome White Socks, and Little Moonlight is the trailer. Around that clubhouse turn, and it is Umbra Snow, then comes Inspired Courage with Zendaya third and Time Heist fourth. Those two trading places, Flame Kissed is fifth, then Chrome White Socks, and Little Moonlight. Umbra Snow, she leads by two, turning down the backside with Inspired Courage, Time Heist alongside, and Zendaya four wide. <clears throat> then comes Flame Kiss, two lengths back to Chrome White Socks, and four lengths to Little Moonlight. Just about half the race left to run now, and Time Heist is taking over the lead. Time Heist goes from third to second to first, and now she's a length and some clear of Inspired Courage. Zendaya dropping back, Umbra Snow going backwards through the pack. Flame Kiss is there, then Chrome White Sox. They're taking closer order, but it is Time Heist with three sixteenths to go. Inspired Courage and Zendaya, Flame Kiss coming on, then Little Moonlight, but Time Heist has opened up. She's three lengths clear now, and Time Heist is running her way into the record books to win by two and some at the wire. Inspired Courage second, Zendaya was third, then Flame Kissed, and Little Moonlight. The official winner is Time Heist. 
She's a five-year-old black mare by all of time, out of Sorax by I and I. She has a home red for Nina Olson, and this is her 15th win in 22 starts. And I'm pretty sure she's retiring. But you never know, I guess. <laughs> because apparently these mares just run forever. <laughs> All right, I'm done making fun. Next up, we have the Philly and Mare Turf Sprint. Five furlongs on the grass for $1.5 million. We have a field of nine. Because of course we do. Leading the field at number one is Gal Gadot for Pete Vela. This is a homebred. Five-year-old daughter of the Black Glove. She's coming off of an impressive win streak. Golden State Distaff, Shoulder, Soldier Stakes, Virginia Harbor Stakes, Texan Stakes, Green Dash Stakes, Singapore Prize, Solace Trophy, and the address unknown cap. 18 for 22 lifetime. But Pete's been smart with her. He knows he's got a good thing going here. And I'm sure he wouldn't mind getting to a million dollars in earnings, which she's just short of. He doesn't run in all those grade one races. He keeps her where she know he knows he, she has been competitive. Can she step up today is the big question. Highest lifetime speed figure is a 91. Number two is Dark Desperate Hours, which, frankly, I'm surprised is a Laura Smith homebred because that sounds like something I would name a horse. Eight for 13 lifetime. This is a three-year-old daughter of a Todd coming off of two straight grade one victories in the Island Fashion and the Oceanside Ladies Dash. This year alone, she has won four and been second twice. Last year, she was third in the Stewards Cup. Number three, this sick beat. For Senrino Hawkinson, a four-year-old daughter of Time Lord, 12 for 18 lifetime, coming off of a victory in the Kentucky Crown Turf Dash, which I believe was against boys. Um, before that, she won the Grade 1 Silver Spear Stakes over Dark Desperate Hours. This year has been weird. She, like, won a race, and then she ran seventh in Dubai, and then she won a race, and then she ran second to a horse I've never heard of, and then she won a race. Which this sick beat will show up today? Stay tuned to find out. Number four is See You Love for Ronnie D. This is a three-year-old daughter of See You Monday. Six for ten lifetime, coming off of a fourth-place finish in the Kentucky Crown Turf Dash. Before that, she'd won two in a row. This filly actually started her career last year very impressively, winning four in a row, was second in the Stewards Cup behind a cross time. Can she make amends on that today? And here is number five, Across Time, last year's winner. She is almost unbeaten. 11 for 12 lifetime with one second place finish. That was last out. She is winning grade one type races, but they are in Barbados. How do you feel about that? Well, obviously she was good enough to win last year over See You Love and Dark Desperate Hours. Number six is one of the great fillies. Dance and Nancy. This is Lee Kara's horse, bred by Art Cage, a daughter of See You Monday. A 12 for 18 lifetime has never been worse than third. Does that work out? Yes, it does. $2.5 million earned. Highest lifetime speed figure is a 100, but that was so long ago that it doesn't show up on her past performances. Um, I do believe she won a Stewards Cup back when she was two. Again, it doesn't show up. We should have the option of making them all show up all the races, in my opinion, for Sim 8.0 or next week, because I like it better. This filly has beaten the boys several times. Um, she was third in the Chimborazo last year. She skipped it this year to come into this race, coming off of three straight victories, including two straight grade ones, both of them against boys. Number seven, Into You for Susie Rydell. This filly was born for great things probably the best female turf sprinter I've ever bred. But unfortunately, she came out around at a time in Susie Rydell's life where she kind of got forgotten. And the stable went to disarray. And she literally would show up and enter this horse every like 10 weeks or so. Like this is a six-year-old mare with only 14 starts. She's won eight of those. She has never been worse than third. Is that a fact? Nope, she was fifth once. Anyway, what has she done for us lately? Well, last year she was second here by a length, um, and that was her first race in 10 weeks. She did not run for almost a year. She ran last out in the island fashion. She was second that day. 
Can she step up from that race off the layoff to win here? She has beaten the boys in the Desert Turf Sprint two years ago. She was third in the Pegasus two years ago. So obviously the talent is there. She just needs to be fit enough now. Number eight, love has no limits for Pete Vela, a homebred who is 11 for 18 lifetime. Coming off a sixth place finish in the island fashion, but before that she won a grade two in Japan. Other races that she's won include the Give Respect Stakes, the Tickle Trophy, which is my new favorite name, highest lifetime speed figure of an 89. And rounding out the field, we have Miss Fresh Slate for Laura Smith. This is a $4.1 million purchase by Sonic, 8 for 11 lifetime, closing in on half a million dollars in earnings, coming off of a grade 3 victory in the Claire Stakes. She has won four of five starts this year, was ninth in the Stewards Cup last season, and that's your field with three minutes to post, and it's time for a contest. Breathing is hard. This is for 15,000 game points. Three fillies have tied for the biggest winning margin in this race. Name all three fillies. You don't have to say the margin, but you do have to say the fillies. I don't think that's right. Chorus, Genuine Socks, and Rogue. I think Tamara was first. Chorus, Genuine Socks, and Rogue. Two and three quarters lengths is the winning thing. So, Tamara, you win. Yay, Tamara. Good job, Tamara. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now it is post time. Post time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Philly and Mare Turf Sprint. $24,100 in the pool. A field of 8 9. Set to go. 5 furlongs. They're off in the Philly and Mare Turf Sprint. Love Has No Limits had to take up at the start, but the rest were away well. It is Into You who goes out to the lead, joined by Dance and Nancy, and then comes this sick beat. See You Love and Gal Gadot, then Fresh, Miss Fresh Slate, Dark Desperate Hours Across Time, and Love Has No Limits is the early trailer. As they go whipping into the turn, and it is Into You dueling with Dance and Nancy. The pace is very fast, this sick beat, then See You Love, Gal Gadot, and then Miss Fresh Slate Across Time, Dark Desperate Hours, and they are winging into the stretch, and it has been these two throughout, Into You you and dance and nancy they've got two lengths on gal gadot then this sick beat miss fresh slate is coming on see you love needs to do better here comes love has no limits and then across time into you dance and nancy they're two lengths clear into you on the inside and dance and nancy and it's gonna be into you who finally gets it done into you wins a neck to dance and nancy two lengths back to gal gadot then comes miss fresh slate and this sick beat I'm so into you, I can barely breathe. Mm. Uh. That's what she's named after, anyway. The official winner is Into You. She's a six-year-old bay mare by Arrow Velocity out of Best New Beat by Beat Black. She is owned by Susie Rydell and was bred by the steward. This is her ninth win in 15 starts, even though she's a thousand years old. And Lord help me, I think she's going to retire. 
please, please just retire her. Let's be done. That would be great. No more showing up in a month. Anyway. Okay. What's next? We have the sprint. Ah, there's 14 horses. Oh my gosh. Why are there so many horses? <sighs> we sure no one else wants to MC? Who wants to take over? Let's see. The fish don't want to do it. Dog doesn't want to do it. Oh, it's me. Number one on the rail is Just Courage. He is the awesome three-year-old by Just Happy, owned by Danny Derby. This guy is 12 for 12 lifetime. Last year, he won the two-year-old sprint championship. This year, he has remained unbeaten, winning three straight grade threes, which I think is interesting that he didn't try him in anything harder until he did take the grade one look my best in New York and then the grade two Long Island. Another interesting note on this horse is that three of his five races this year have all come at seven furlongs. Today he'll go six, but he did win the uh, sprint championship last year at six furlongs. So. Number two is front row seats, Abe Frobin homebred, a three-year-old son of St. Longinus. Eight for nine lifetime, his lone loss came behind Build You an Empire in the esteemed stakes two back. Since then, he has won the grade one Saturn Handicap in California just two weeks ago. Number three, Universe of Stars for Xander Zone. This is a $2.7 million purchase. It's a six-year-old that Xander Zone has not retired yet. This horse is annoying. 33 starts, eight wins. That's pretty good. Just under a million in earnings. That's pretty good. Four-thirds. Okay, that's entertaining. 16 seconds. Why? That's just mean. That's just like put a nose extender on him because blah. Universe of Stars, he doesn't win that often. Uh, in fact, his last win was so long ago it doesn't show up. But he clearly runs second a lot, so why not? Number four, Plenty of Fire for Mike Larson. This is a $3 million purchase by St. Longinus, who is 17 for 30 lifetime. This group of dirt sprinters has really been around the block. They did not retire when I thought they would. We've got plenty of five- and six-year-olds still out there, including this one who did win the Grade 1 Inspired Fox 2-back and the Grade 1 Desert Golden Sprint earlier this year. Number 5 is World Gone Mad, another Michael Larson horse, a $3.3 million purchase, who is 11 for 19 lifetime, coming off of two straight Grade 2 wins. Last, uh, before that, I mean, he started the year with a listed stakes win and then was third in the crater handicap which was behind those two crazy horses that dark prophecy and more than life itself so he's run against some good horses this year number six sire line for brianna mckenzie um i don't remember the exact story but brianna wanted this horse and then she didn't get the horse and then the horse came for sale and she paid way too much for the horse or i don't remember but anyway the horse is eight for 12 lifetime he has won three races this year um He's been second three times, twice in the last three starts. But this horse has not been worse than second since week eight of last year. Not this year, last year. Number seven, swing for the fence. Abe Froman has this one. I loved this horse last year. Loved him. And he kind of didn't do what I wanted. He did end up going uh, four for six last year. This year, he has won another three starts. He has never tried grade one company, but he is a grade two winner. What is he going to do against the big boys today? Number eight, prize possession for Gigi Go Faster. This is a son of Bull Black Nova. This is a gelding coming off of a fourth place effort in that grade one Saturn handicap. But before that, he won the grade three Tropicana, which sounds like something I want to do. Interestingly, this horse was a $65,000 claimer just earlier this year. Number nine is Dark Prophecy. 19 for 21 lifetime with two second place finishes. This guy has earned $2.9 million, highest lifetime speed figures in 97. He has been one of the great horses in recent memory. He was first in the Malibu Beach last year, second in the Pegasus, second in the Desert Golden Sprint. Will he be second here today or will he step up? Because it would be annoying. Number 10, Build You an Empire for Xander Zone. Now, I have to fully admit that earlier today when I saw this race, I was like, how is this horse still in training? I, like, 
was so mad that he didn't retire last year or the year before that I just blocked him out, I guess. But shows what I know because Bill Jew and Empire has won his last five starts. Only one of those is a grade one. He's been kind of messing around down in Louisiana and listed stakes, but that's okay. He was fourth in the Stewards Cup Sprint last year, fourth in the Pegasus this year, second in the Desert Golden Sprint last year. Is he the same horse he was, and can he go out on top? Number 11 is Legendar for Sarah Julin. A six-year-old son of walk-off Grand Slam. This guy was fifth in a grade one last out, but he won a confidence-building allowance the week before that, two weeks before that. 11 for 37 lifetime, another one of these really cool older horses. I don't know, I just thought we'd get a lot more three-year-olds on the card today than we have. We've got a lot of old horses. It's fun. I like it. Let's keep them. Number 12 is Get Out for Xander Zone, named after the funny movie. And by funny, I mean horrifying. A $4 million purchase. This guy was 13 for 18. He won this late race last year. He is the defending champion. He's been annoying this year. Third in the Pegasus, third in the desert. But he is coming off of a grade one win in the Lexington Sprint. Number 13, Rick Sanchez for Anku Khan. This guy is second last out in the Kentucky Crown Sprint. He is only one for 28 lifetime. He has been in the top three spots 18 times, and he has earned over half a million dollars. Rounding out the field is number 14. He sets fires for Jennifer Klebesh, a $1.2 million purchase who has won two grade two races in a row. Last year, he was second in the Stewards Cup by a head to his stablemate Primo Gold. So in case you're mathematically challenged, 10 for 12 lifetime just under a million in earnings and that is your field for the sprint a very very good and wonderful field for the sprint and i will not complain about it whatsoever good on you guys It is post time for the sprint. Only 13,000 in the pool, which means that you guys are slackers. Set with love. Kind of. The field of 14 is in the gate. And they're off. Swing for the fence, right down to his nose early. Swing for the fence, terrible start. Sire line and plenty of fire away slowly too, but Just Courage got out cleanly from the rail and he spurts for the lead. Here comes Legendar, then front row seats and World Gone Mad. Dark Prophecy and He Sets Fires, then Rick Sanchez and Build You an Empire. Get out, Universe of Stars, Prize Possession, plenty of fire, Sire line. And Swing for the Fence is the early trailer of the 14 as they head into that far turn. It is Just Courage and he leads by two and the pace is fast legendar and front road seats world gone mad and dark prophecy build you an empire and he sets fires get out needs to do better universe of stars then plenty of fire and sire line it is just courage leading them into the stretch front row seats has taken over second as legendar drops back here come the closers build you an empire and dark prophecy world gone mad and get out he sets fires it's just courage front row seats though is breathing down his neck build you an empire and dark prophecy just courage front row seats collars him and front row seats Seats is now rolling away from Just Courage and front row seats. Wow, going to win by more than a length over a startled Just Courage who's going to have to be second. Build you an empire from way back, finish third. Then comes Dark Prophecy, Get Out, and Legendar.
The official winner is Front Row Seats. He's a three-year-old black colt by St. Longinus out of weight... What I Always Wanted, What I Always Wanted by Tyconic, homebred for Abe Froman, and this is his ninth win in ten starts. That was a very good race. I think we can all agree. It was quite lovely. I mean, I guess unless you wanted to win and didn't, then it kind of stunk. <laughs> but as a race goes, it was pretty good. Oy. Should we do a contest or should we keep going to the next one? How many horses are in the next one? Just talking to myself around here. Eleven horses. You guys are mean. <sighs> All right, next up is the Philly and Mare Turf Mile. Number one is a homebred for Jack Meyer, and this is Sever the Soul. A three-year-old daughter of Distant Dream, who is five for nine lifetime, coming off of a grade three victory in the Ouija Board Stakes. She was third in the two-year-old version of this race last year. Number two is Quiet River, who runs for the Bless Your Heart Syndicate. Four-year-old daughter of Able Friend, who was the damn sire on one of the two-year-olds that won yesterday. Earlier this year, this filly won the Grade 1 Inglewood Mile. She has been second and then fifth in two races since then, but nine for 14 lifetime. Number three is the best turf miler Xander Zone may ever have. That is Velvet Soft, 11 for 16 lifetime. She won this race last year. This is your defending champion. She's been kind of annoying this year. Um, since then, she was third in the Pegasus, second in Dubai. Uh, she won a weird Grade 1. I can't figure out where that is. Some were weird, and then she won a grade one in Australia. So she still got it, but she was third last out. Will she retire? That is an interesting question. Number four, start of something for Rochelle Zahasi. $2.5 million purchase. This filly is coming off of a grade three victory in the Cypress 1000 Guineas. Eight for 11 lifetime with a second and a third. Last year, she was seventh in the two-year-old version of this race. Number five, stars for wishing. Rebecca Rose Hepburn owns this one, a 7 for 10 lifetime three-year-old daughter of Red Ferns. This filly is riding a lengthy win streak, all seven of her wins in a row. She did not break her maiden until week 15 of last year, and she has been unbeaten since then. It's interesting what Rose did with this filly. She ran her in a grade three, and then she took her back into allowance. Then she ran her in a grade two, and another grade two, and then she finally stepped up to grade one company. Oh, still winning, and then back to a grade two. She kind of kept her in against three-year-olds. I really like the prep work that's gone into this filly. Number six is Silver and Steel. For Tamara Estes, this is a four-year-old daughter of Steel Slayer. This filly won the Stewards Cup two years ago when she was two. Last year, she was third in this division. Fourth in the Pegasus. Uh, second in the Inglewood, ter uh, Inglewood Mile. She was a grade one winner this year, twice, and is coming off of one of those grade one wins. Ten for 15 lifetime. She's faster than you. Number seven is Stars Align for Louise Bayou. I just get confused when Louise has a turf miler. Why? I mean, she's got a couple. Like, she's got the favorite in the turf mile itself, so that's weird. 14 for 20 lifetime. This filly is riding a five-race win streak. The only horse that has been breaking up her win streak, otherwise it would be a much longer win streak, is Velvet Stars, who is Velvet Soft, sorry, who has beaten her twice. And she was six in this race last year. But as I just said, unbeaten since then. Number eight, test the defense for Eric Nalbone, a homebred who is by Distant Dream out of the, I believe, Stewards Cup winning mare Raging Fire. Five for eight lifetime. This filly has won three straight races in a row. She was brought through her conditions very carefully to get fit. Broke her main, won a non of two, just missed in a non of three, three times stakes winner since then. That's what it takes to get a stable like that back into condition. And here she is to test herself. Test it, get it, ah, in a grade one. Number nine is What About Us, which I think came from a pink song. This is another daughter of Red Fern. Sten Reno Hawkinson owns her. Uh, won a grade one in uh, England, two back. Was second behind Silver and Steel in a California grade one last out. Nine for 11 lifetime with two second place finishes. This filly has already earned 1.2 million. She's already a multiple group one winner. Last year, she won the Stewards Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. 
Number 10 is left unsaid for Ashley Gibson, the extraordinarily pregnant Ashley Gibson. Like, how much time is left? Can someone catch me up? I'm kind of losing track. Feels like people are just popping them out. Anyway, this filly won the grade one Irish matron last out by two lengths. Before that, she'd won a grade three. Earlier this year, she won three in a row. Um, the only time she lost this year at all actually was behind Velvet Soft, and last year her nemesis was Silver and Steel. She could just not beat that filly, and I think it was kind of annoying for her. Rounding out the field, number 11, Stay Cool, Stay Fancy for Dan Gordon. A $2.9 million purchase who has earned back 1.1, 12 for 24 a lifetime, coming off of a victory in the Grade 2 Philippine Matron. Uh, before that, she raced against the boys and was beaten two lengths by Pepper Jack Boudin in the Toronto Mile. That is your field for the Philly and Mariturf Mile. Two minutes to post. Going to take a breather because that's smart. Quick contest question. This is for 15,000 game points. Xander Zone and Brianna McKenzie have both won the Stewards Cup Sprint five times, which is aggressive and frankly they should share. Name the two horses that won for Dave Shields. You didn't see that coming, did you? Whoa, whoa, it's moving so fast. NP Racing. NP Racing. Good job. You are the winner. Hemi Cuba is my new favorite horse name of all time. <laughs> Just have the museum open. Don't close it. You will be sad if you close it. All right, it is post time for the Philly and Mare Turf Mile. Betting cool pool closes at $6,000. What? No. Unacceptable. Go bet on the dirt mile. Otherwise, I quit. There is a ringing in my ear that is very annoying. Yeah, it's obnoxious. They're off in the Philly and Mare Turf Mile, and it was a good start for all but Silver and Steel, who had to take up after the break. From the outside, here comes Left and Said, intent on the lead, and no one really wants to go with her. Sever the soul from the rail, and then start of something, Silver and Steel after the slow break in Quiet River. Then comes Velvet Soft and Stars for Wishing. Stars align, test the defense, stay cool, stay fancy. And what about us is the early trailer. It is Left Unsaid who takes them up to the backstretch, and she leads by four lengths, uncontested, with Sever the Soul sitting second. Then comes Silver and Steel, who's moved up into third. Start of Something is back fourth. Then comes Quiet River. Stars for Wishing and Velvet Soft. Stars align. Test the defense. Stay cool. Stay fancy. And What About Us is still the trailer. They've got a half mile left to go in the Philly and Mare Turf Mile, and Left Unsaid, she still leads by three lengths. Silver and Steel is the danger. She's getting closer. She's second. Start of Something is up into third. Here comes Velvet Soft between horses, and Velvet Soft is now less than five lengths off the lead. Stars for wishing, stars align, Quiet River and Test the Defense, and they're running down the stretch with Left Unsaid, two lengths clear. Here's Silver and Steel trying to track her down. Velvet Soft coming very fast on the outside and start of something. It is Left Unsaid, a length in front. Silver and Steel, Velvet Soft, and start of something. Left Unsaid is all out. Silver and Steel trying to get her, but Left Unsaid had enough, and Left Unsaid wins. A half to Silver and Steel, another half to Velvet Soft, then Star to Something and Stars for Wishing.
The official winner is left unsaid. She's a four-year-old black filly by silent spoken word out of Avant Gardner by Held High. This is a homebred for Ashley Gibson. But let's be real. I'll give you like six million dollars for her right now. That's probably low. I'll give you seven million dollars for her right now. And you can read the first full. I want her, please give her to me. I want to breed her and sell her babies. 12 for 18 lifetime, now over 2 million in earnings. Her companion cat is named Hat. You don't even need her, Ash, because you're going to have your own baby. So horsey babies are like not even in your wheelhouse anymore. 12 million, that's a lot. I don't want to do for 12 million. Grumble. All right. Next up is the Philly and Mare. Nope. I was like three races too late. The Dirt Mile. Oh, we only have a field of eight. Yay! Oh, we only have six minutes. Boo! <laughs> Number one on the rail is Time Over Time. Danny Derby bred this one, but Teaku Downs is the owner. This is a six-year-old gelding who upgraded to Freak this year. He hasn't really shown that because he hasn't won that much. He has a grade two winner, but he's running right there with some of the biggest freaks in the division, like Colby, Time Heist, Little Silver Dust, um, Gonzo. So he's a good boy. Trust me on this. Six for 26 lifetime. I may have already said that. $700,000 earned. He was 10th in this race last year. It can only get better because there's eight horses. Okay, I'm done. I'll show myself out. Number two, Lost to the Dark for Xander Zone. This is a son of Dortmund who costs $2.7 million. He has eight for 10 lifetime and has earned $1.4 million. Lost to the Dark, blah, blah, won the Stewards Cup Futurity last year by four lengths. Very impressive. This year, he has gone on a tear. He won the Grade 1 Derby Mile. He won the Grade 1 Pacific Rim. He won the Grade 1 Long Island Mile. Since then, he was second against older horses and then fourth against older horses in the Marvel Stakes. Uh-oh, Lost to the Dark. What's happened to you and your form? Where did your form go? Number three is Colby, who is apparently running next year, so don't get excited. Colby is Danny Derby's $3.5 million purchase, who's earned back, wait for it, 3.5. This is your Marvel Stakes winner. He was second in this race last year, but he did win the Grade 1 Pegasus. He was second in the Desert Mile behind Gonzo. Gonzo is in this race. Colby has been a top runner his whole life. Um, I think he won this race as a two-year-old or the two-year-old version of it, although I don't have it up. And he's by Selatai, and he's cool. Number four, Dubai Sands for Mike Larson. This is a son of Consecration. 11 for 23 lifetime, closing in on a million in earnings, was a grade three winner last out, has actually won three grade three races this um, year. And yeah, sorry, carrying on very important conversations while doing this. My friends have had a week, let me tell you. There have been five deaths in my inner circle in a week. Yeah, it's hard because you're like trying to be a rock for people. But at the same time, you're like, I want to go hide in a corner because I'm terrified something will happen to me. You know that feeling? So right now it's like rock time. Number five is not in the cards for Doug Como. This is a $500,000 purchase who has earned back 623 seven for 11 lifetime. Coming off of a win in the grade two Mojave, that was week 13. This guy has never won a grade one. I lied, he won one last year. Um, he won the grade one Lexington Futurity before being second to Lost in the Dark in this race. You know, the two-year-old version of it. He has not run in a grade one since then. Um, but he is a grade two winner. Number six is Street Dancer, which just makes me want to de dance. Do, 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 do. I'm dancing, but you guys can't tell because, you know, there's no video, I think. Sometimes I freak out and think maybe the video is on. This guy's won two grade two races in a row, but his uh, before that, his last victory was the grade three Batman week two. He was sixth in this race last year, has only been worse than third twice, 
And this is a sun ball of time out of a nice mare in street lights. Number seven is Majingling for Steph Lonro. This is a homebred son of Selatai out of Ottawa, who was her nice mare. 12 for 16 lifetime. He's earned 1.2 million. He's coming off of two straight grade three wins. He was a grade one winner earlier this year. He was fourth in this race last year. Um, I really like this horse because he's cool. Rounding out the field with three minutes to go is number eight, Gonzo, for Pete Vela. This is a six-year-old son of Cyberman. This is one of those great pay his son horses. Um, he was awesome, but then he disappeared when she disappeared. He is back. He is a two-time grade one winner for Pete this year. Coming off of a fifth place finish in the Marvel, 14 for 19 lifetime. He's earned $3.8 million. He is retiring after this race and looks to be a huge dirt mile influence. That's your field for the Dirt Mile. Two minutes to post. Time for a break. You guys are making me laugh being like, pregnancy is the worst. I'm not going to have any more kids. This is the worst. Yeah, pregnancy was the worst. I'm not going to lie. And single momming is also the worst. Like, I really hate it. I love my kids, but I hate single momming. But I'm also simultaneously like, who wants to love me? Because I want more babies and cats and horses. I'm cool with the one dog right now. That's enough dogs. It is post time for the Dirt Mile. Betting pool closes at $8,000. Okay, since you guys are talking cats, before I call the race, I'm going to tell this cat story. So I got a brand new armchair. It was my Mother's Day present to myself. I was very excited. It's been delivered. It's cozy. It's actually not as comfortable as I was hoping, but it's okay. The kids love it. So they can sit on that, and I'll sit on my couch, and everything's fine. And I took a picture of the cat sitting on it, because I was like, haha, look, it used to be my armchair, now it's my cat's, and I tweeted it. Someone replied with a picture of 13 cats on their bed, and was like, haha, I know what you mean. And I replied, and I was like, is this real life? And they said, yes, I have 20 cats. And I was like, like, we joke about stuff like that? And I kind of say I want 20 cats, but I don't think I could do that for reals because 13 cats on my bed, like that, no, 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 <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> it is my future, but also no. <laughs> They're in the gate. They're off in the Stewards Cup dirt mile, and it was a great start. Time over time from the inside gate goes out to lead them, then comes not in the cards. Lost to the dark in Dubai Sands, then Majingalane, Colby, Street Dancer, and Gonzo from the outside takes back last. It is time over time who leads by two lengths over not in the cards, another two back to lost in the dark. Then comes Dubai Stands, Majingalane is fifth, then Colby sixth, three lengths back to Street Dancer. And Gonzo would have 12 lengths to make up. 
So it is time over time with a half mile left to go, and he's too clear of Colby. That one's in second now, is not in the cards, and lost to the dark, dark drop back. Gonzo's coming on. Here's Majingling up into third now, and he's only two from the front. Street Dancer and Dubai Sands has dropped back last. They're into the stretch, and it is time over time trying to hold off Colby. Gonzo, and here's Majingling moving between horses, and Majingling now takes over the lead. Majingling with time over time battling back Colby, and then two to Gonzo. Majingling and time over time, but Majingling is going to win, and Majingling Jingalane is your winner of the Dirt Mile Overtime Overtime. Colby was third, two lengths back to Gonzo, not in the cards, and Street Dancer. The official winner is Majingalane. He's a four-year-old Bay Colt by Selatai out of Ottawa by King of Kindness. This is a homebred for Steph Lonro, and he is 13 for 17 lifetime. And he's a freak. Yeah. Seven minutes to post for the next race, which is the Philly and Mare Turf. Oh, my Lord. There's 14 horses. I quit. I can't do it, guys. I'm not going to get through all 14 horses. My nose hurts and my soul hurts. And All right. I'll try. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Number one is Wild Racing Heart for Willie Carson, a three-year-old daughter of Take Me Up, who is coming off of a fourth-place finish in a grade one in Kentucky. Earlier this year, she won the grade one Oceanside Oaks. Number two is Speak of Me, a four-year-old daughter of Black Tide for Cleopatra. This is Cleo's best chance on the day, I do believe. Never been worse than second, nine for 15 lifetime, uh, was second by a neck in this race last year. Number three is Snowfall for John Exet, a $1.9 million purchase by Katassin Black, nine for 13 lifetime, has come into here off of a five race winning streak including the grade one flower pot in new york number four is lilibet for carol hansen carol retired a uncle ish to this horse earlier today named moonfaced who i bred to and got a stakes first out so that was exciting this filly has been second in grade one races in her last two starts behind forever with me 10 for 16 lifetime uh, she is a grade one winner earlier this year and was fifth in this race last year number five is black starfall for leanne anderson i love this filly i think she's coming back to me which helps with the love six for eight lifetime this is a daughter of Atoko out of black comet Third last out in a grade one. She was your winner of the grade one International Oaks earlier this year. Number six is Peace Be With You, who was third in this race last year for Jolene Danner. as a five-year-old daughter of Atoko. Five for 15 lifetime. She's earned half a million dollars. Got to suspect that she'll be retiring at the end of this. She finishes third a lot. She has seven thirds and 15 starts, but she's actually coming off of a win in the grade three is wanting enough. Number seven is Royally Bred White Star for Danny Derby, a homebred daughter of Itoko out of Titanic. Hold on. Everyone keeps asking me the same question, and I said I did it, but no one thinks I did it. So, yes, everything's closed. Meaning the pick six betting and stuff. I did that before the first race. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, this filly won the grade one Cupid's Arrow, two back, and the grade two ladies turf last out 10 for 14 lifetime really everything this horse does on the track is a bonus because she just exists to be a broodmare as does number eight forever with me this is i believe the final mating between sydney and shahira a 17 million dollar purchase for pete bella this filly won the stewards cup last year by a neck over speak with me who is back in the race and wants to like turn the tables or whatever. She lost to Lilibet twice earlier this year, and then she defeated Lilibet twice in her last two starts. Nine for 15 lifetime has only been worse than second once. Blah, 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 blah. Number nine is Love's First Kiss. This is a homebred for Carl Smythe. She was a grade one winner in the Worldwide Stakes and a grade one winner over the boys in the Prince of England Stakes three back. 
11 for 21 lifetime has been on the board in 19 of 21 starts. This filly has not been worse than third in two years, and she's a daughter of Kaiju. Number 10, Hug Me Goodbye for Jolene Danner. This is a daughter of Riff. 11 for 7 lifetime coming off of a third place effort between, behind Forever With Me and Lilibet in the Golden Gift Stakes. Before that, she'd won four in a row. Number 11 is Pokes Anastasia for Poke Buffalo. A four-year-old daughter of Rostov, who is four for 19 lifetime. She is coming off a win in the Better Lucky Stakes. This is a plug. Better Lucky is my favorite race mare out of Sahara Gold with the Desert Stormer line. This is a thing that's been in the sim forever with Loki Flame and Loki Masterpiece. And their son, Kentucky Wildcat, is in my auction. He does not suck. You should bid on him. That was her only stakes win. And, well that I can see in the last two years. and But why not? She's in good form and has a highest lifetime speed figure of an 87. Number 12, love cannot fail. Don't I say this every night where I go, yes, it can. Didn't this horse run yesterday? <laughs> how, is, how does the same person have the same horse name twice? Well, probably because I bred them. A $1.9 million daughter, million dollar daughter of I Am Right Here for Louise Bayou. Five for eight lifetime. Coming off of a second place finish behind White Star. But before that, won the grade one Virginia Oaks. Was the winner of this race last year. Good job, Philly. Number 13 with two minutes to go is You Should Be Here. A homebred for Mike Springer. Mike Springer did win a big race yesterday with... Something like you look like fire or fire to look at. Yeah, that was a thing that happened. Uh, this is the winner of the grade one pre-grand opera last out in France on the ARC card. Um, she also won the grade three manatee and the grade one Kyoto Oaks earlier this year. Uh, this filly has always been a good one. That Kyoto Oaks was last year, but whatever. I'm on the right track. Seven for 12 lifetime with half a million dollars earned. This is a Moon of Atlantis filly, which makes her related to all of those Carol Hansen horses like Lilibet, etc. and so forth, including the horse on the outside, which is number 14, God Save the Queen. This is the my shot at Queen of Atlantis. This is by Coleman Hell. Um... Six for ten lifetime coming off of a grade one win in the Wonder Why stakes. Before that, uh, four back, she won the grade three Fiji Knights. She was seventh in the two-year-old version of this race last year. And that's your field. This is a very good field. You guys need to bet lots of money on this race because there's only 7,000 in the pool. And it's technically post time, but I need to take a drink of water. So bet on this race. If anything, I'm going to be a very well-hydrated steward when this is over. It is post time for the Philly and Mare Turf, a field of 14 going a mile and a quarter on the grass for $2.5 million. The defending champion is forever with me. The horse that just missed last time is Speak of Me and trying to do better this year. Okay, okay, they're in the gate. They're off in the Philly and Mare turf, and Peace Within You stumbles at the start, and a bad break, too, for Love's First Kiss. You Should Be Here was sluggish. It is Black Starfall who goes out to the lead, joined by Lilibet, and then You Should Be Here is rushed up. Speak of me in Wild Racing Heart. Then comes Love's First Kiss, Love Cannot Fail, in White Star, Forever With Me, Pokes Anastasia, be Peace With You, Peace Within You, uh, Snowfall, Hug Me Goodbye, and God Save the Queen is the early trailer. So it is Black Starfall who leads by two lengths and she's happy as can be out here over You Should Be Here second with Lilibet alongside third. They're opening up three lengths to speak of me fourth. Then comes Wild Racing Heart, Love's First Kiss, White Star, Love Cannot Fail, and Forever With Me, Peace Within You, Pokes Anastasia, Snowfall, Hug Me Goodbye, and God Save the Queen is the trailer. 
Only about a dozen lengths front to back with no change in order yet. It is Black Starfall leading by two. Then comes the rest. You should be here, Lilibet and Speak of Me. Wild Racing Heart and Love's First Kiss. Then comes White Star and Love Cannot Fail. Forever With Me, Peace Within You, Pokes Anastasia, Snowfall, Hug Me Goodbye, God Save the Queen, and they're coming to the half mile pole. And Black Starfall now leads by three. She's going to try and take them the whole way. You should be here is kicked on. Here comes Speak of Me. She passes Lilibet who drops back a spot. Love's First Kiss. Wild Racing Heart, Forever With Me, Moving Between Horses, Love Cannot Fail, White Star, and Peace Within You. They come to the top of the lane, and Black Starfall needs to get going because here come the closers. It is Speak Of Me who takes over first. Forever With Me is right behind her, Love's First Kiss, and Wild Racing Heart. You should be here in Lilibet. Black Starfall trying to fight back. Speak Of Me and Forever With Me, and it could be a repeat of last year. Forever With Me and Speak Of Me, and these two are kicking on Black Starfall there at the rail. Forever With Me and Speak Of me and at the wire forever with me just ahead of speak of me an exact result from last year black star fall third loves first first kiss fourth and you should be here was sixth behind wild racing heart The official winner is Forever With Me. She's a four-year-old black filly by Sydney out of Shahira by Frayed. She is owned by Pete Bella and was bred by the steward. This is her 10th win in 16 starts, and I strongly suspect she's retiring because she wasn't supposed to win any Stewards Cup races, let alone two. She was really just supposed to be a broodmare. So good on you, Pete. Although I can think of one Australian jockey who will not be thrilled by this result. Next up, we have the Philly and Mare Sprint. We have six minutes to post, and it's a field of ten, so let's dive in. Number one on the rail is the Big Party for Laura Ferguson. This is the horse that uh, she purchased out of the Sim 50th Gathering a year ago at Santa Anita. Ten for 12 lifetime with two second-place finishes, coming off of a win in the Evanescent Stakes. Number two is Gathering My win Wings. <laughs> Gathering My Wins. Also that. For Lucas Davenport. This is a four-year-old daughter of If Looks Could. She is coming off of three straight wins. 12 for 21 lifetime and is a $600,000 earner. Number three, Pinch Hit Home Run. Abe Froman trying to win, I mean sweep, the sprint races for older horses. A three-year-old daughter of Walk Off Grand Slam. Six for 10 lifetime coming off of a second place effort. This filly has not won since last year. Number four, it's a long shot now, which has always been one of my favorite names that Xander Zone has. I don't know why, I just like it. This is a daughter of Parody out of the awesome mare Melanie, named after my sister. 12 for 21 lifetime. This filly had won three in a row earlier this year, but was second in the Canadian Challenge last out behind third versus. Number five is Xander Zone's next horse in this race, and that is Chaos Theory. I don't know what deal he had to strike with the devil to get a daughter of chaos, but good on you. This is the daughter of One Look Back out of chaos. Seven for 13 lifetime, a few dollars short of a million. Coming off of a second place effort against the boys in the Lost in the Fog Stakes, and before that had won two straight grade ones against the girls. Was second in the Stores Cup last year. Number six, Ring on My Finger. Nick Gilmore owns this one. This is a store bred by Parody. Eight for 12 lifetime. She's earned half a million dollars coming off of two straight wins. Um, she took the route last year to run against the boys in the two-year-old sprint eliminations. She ran okay, but uh, Nick Gilmore decided not to run in the final, and she ended up going week one, three, six, etc., so forth this year. This filly is a five-time stakes winner this year, and that's what I know about her. Number seven is third versus for Brianna McKenzie. This is a homebred and was your upset winner of the Philly and Mare Sprint last year, so she's your defending champ. She's coming off of three straight wins, including that grade one over It's a Long Shot Now. Number nine, no, eight, because math. Number eight is Care Package, Xander Zone's third horse in the race. This is a three-year-old daughter of Walk Off Grand Slam, six for 11 lifetime. She's won two straight races, including a grade three over loss, uh, the grade three Lost in the Fog over Sireline. Number nine is Ipsirk for Art Cage. I love this filly. 
because her name is Ipsirk and she's funny. She is out of Especially Crispy, who's that whole, like, her crispinessness line. Um, 16 for 27 lifetime, $1.5 million earned. She was ninth in this race last year. I want to say she won it the year before that. Can anyone confirm? You guys will take too long. I'll do it. Plus, I probably made it up. She was third the year before that. So, yeah. Anyway, female families in her female family have won this race. And then number 10, rounding out the field, is Jack Myers Homebred, Silence in Between. This is a six-year-old daughter of Look, I Am Scary, 14 for 28 lifetimes. She's earned a million bucks. She's coming off of a listed stakes win in Trinidad and Tobago. And last year, she was fifth in this race, and that's your field for the Philly and Mare Sprint. I'm going to type a contest question because I'm losing my voice again. I haven't seen the actual one. The question was, for 20,000 game points, what specific feathered animal is on my socks? I've seen peacock. I've seen parrot, which is close. Think exotic. Emu is a good one, but not that. Pegasus. That's actually funny. I kind of wish it was Pegasus. That would have been really good. Macaw is very close. I'm not looking for macaw, but it's really close. It's possible that this bird... Toucan! Laura Smith comes with Toucan! Laura Smith, you get 20,000 game points. You just defeated Kane Saracen, who also made the jump. I'm wearing Toucan socks. Because that's how I roll. Okay, now like 10 people are saying it. Y'all a little late. One minute to post. How's the betting pool look? Bad. You guys are in trouble. We're fighting. It's like how I deal with my five-year-olds. It doesn't matter how many times I tell them they're bad. They're not going to move faster. It is post time for the Philly and Mare Sprint, which is thankfully only, whoops, I never closed the betting on the last race, my bad, <laughs> which is thankfully only seven furlongs for two million dollars. They're in the gate. They're off in the Philly and Mare Sprint and it's a long shot now, bobbled the break, the big party had to take up. It is Gathering My Wings who goes out to lead them, then Ipsirk from the outside, ring on my finger, brush up between horses, and it's a long shot now. Then comes Care Package, the big party, third versus Chaos Theory, pinch hit home run, and Silence in Between is your early trailer as they go running towards that half mile pole with a ring on my finger, now your new leader. She puts her head in front of Gathering My Wings, then Ipsirk, it's a long shot now, and Care Package, two back to the big party, third versus and Chaos Theory, then pinch hit home run, and Silence in Between. So it is Ring on My Finger and Ipsirk. These two dueling heads apart going into the lane. They're too clear of the big party and care package. Gathering My Wings in third versus. It is Ring on My Finger and Ipsirk. The big party trying to scoot in between them. Third versus coming from the back and then care package. It is still Ring on My Finger. The big party and Ipsirk. Ring on My Finger is all out. The big party trying to get her and Ipsirk. But Ring on My Finger is going to upset the Philly and Mare Sprint. And Ring on My Finger is your winner over the big party. Ipsirk was third, then third versus Care Package and Chaos Theory.
The official winner is Ring on My Finger. She's a three-year-old black filly by parody out of Love You Forever by St. Longinus. She is owned by Nick Gilmore, and this is her ninth win in 13 starts. Next up. Dirt Mile. We did that. Turf. We did that. That one. Turf Mile. We're on the Turf Mile. There's 11 horses, because of course there are. Number one is Bobby Bonilla's Bonilla's Tiny Moments. This is a seven-year-old son of Incremental, a $1.8 million purchase. He was coming off of a fourth-place effort in the Arcadia Turf Mile. He was fifth in this race last year. Number two is Room in Your Heart for Rocky Rializa, a $2.2 million purchase. This is now a seven-year-old gelding by Harden Your Heart. He has not won since the Dubliner Mile Week 5. Number three is Song of Vajra, which I think I got in trouble for last year saying incorrectly. That's just how I'm going to say it because no one has told me what the right thing is. This is a four-year-old for Alyssa Lappa, a son of Distant Dream, who is coming off of a second-place effort in the Low Kite Magic Stakes. Before that, he won two in a row, including the Shakopee Turf Championship. Number four is Whisper Soft for Gary Pratt. A three-year-old son of Mickey, who was a million-dollar purchase and has earned back 669000 This guy is eight for ten, never worse than third. Um, he was riding a six-race win streak, five-race win, excuse me, win streak, uh, third in the Stewards Cup last year, but then he was second ahead to Pepper Jack Boudin, last out. Number five is Pepper Jack Boudin's arch nemesis, and that is Superpowers for Sten Reno Hawkinson. I don't know, he might be slowing down a little bit. He was like almost unbeaten and awesome and whatever, but then he was fourth in this race last year, second in the Pegasus. He did win the Dubai Millennium Mile, third in the Toronto, and fourth in the pre Benjamin Franklin. Um, win, lose, or draw, I suspect he'll probably retire tonight. Highest lifetime speed figure is a 98. Number six is Of the Great Runs. Susie Rydell trying to make it two tonight. This is six year old son of Frankel. A seven-time winner of $1.3 million. He has not won since week 10 of last year, but he was second by a neck in this race last year. Number seven is Freedom to Dream. Ashley Gibson always also trying to make it a two-bagger, a two-pack, or whatever you want to call it. Let's just call it a double. Nine for 11 lifetime for this three-year-old son of early edition coming off of a victory in the pre-Benjamin Franklin. He has won three races from Europe in a row. His last loss was to Dragon Flag, who isn't here. Where's Dragon Flag? I haven't seen that name in ages. Where's Dragon Flag? Find me, Dragon Flag. Uh, Freedom to Dream was second in the Stewards Cup last year. Number eight is More Secrets. This is a Fanta Arcadia owned son of Distant Dream. He's a three year old and he is five for ten lifetime, five wins, five seconds. This horse either wins or he's second. Um, this horse was a winner last out in California in a grade two, but before that he lost to Sender Horses in the grade one Caulfield Derby and the grade one Doncaster Trophy. Sender Horses is not here, which is weird because probably would have been one of the favorites, um, but this is a multiple grade two winner. Number nine is the, everyone's favorite popular turf miler, Pepper Jack Boudin. Louise Bayou owns this one. Uh, last year, he was third in this race. He was your winner of the English 2000 Guineas, the Irish 2000 Guineas, the SoCal Mile. He did win the Pegasus earlier this year and the Toronto Mile, coming off of two straight grade one victories. Will it be fried cheese today? Pepper Jack Boudin is on the loose. I don't know. I don't know what I just said. Number 10 is All Your Might for Sarah Julin. This is her second old gelding entry on the card. This is an 11-year-old gelded son of Might. He has made 56 starts. He has won 10 of them. He has been top three in 26 of those 56 starts, a $1.4 million earner. Um, he's always right there. He was second in the All-Star Turf Mile. Two back, he was second in the Osaka Mile. Four back. Um, he did win a grade one at the end of last year as a 10-year-old, defeating one of the horses in here named Make a Man. 
And that is the number 11 horse, Make a Man, for Pete Vela, who's trying to go two in a row-ish. I don't know when the turf race was. That could have been a while ago. Who knows? Uh, this is a $2.5 million son of Rillian, who is 15 for 24 lifetime, has earned $1.3 million, and was a grade three winner, three starts back. And that's your field for the turf mile. I'm going to do the contest question typing again because tired of talking. Hmm. Brian Levitt was on the right track, but we always say you have to spell the names correctly. So then Pete Vela jumped in. And I guess he technically spelled both names correctly before Allie got to it. So I'm going to give this one to Pete. Right. <laughs> All right. It's post time for the turf mile. I think this is Pepper Jack Boudin and Superpowers round like 14 or something. So let's see how it plays out. They're off in the Stewards Cup turf mile and Whisper Soft was one step slow. Superpowers bobbled the brake, but the rest were away well. And it is now Whisper Soft who has rushed up. Freedom to Dream and Pepper Jack Boudin. Then comes Superpowers and Make a Man. Tiny moments and room in your heart. Then all your might of the great ones, more secrets. And Song of Bajra is at the back of the pack. It is a Whisper Spot Soft who has opened up two lengths on Superpowers who sits second. Three back to Pepper Jack Boudin who tucks in four or five-ish behind that one. Freedom to Dream is alongside, as is Make a Man, five wide. Tiny Moments is a length back, then Room in Your Heart, All Your Might, three back to Of the Great Ones, More Secrets, and Song of Vajra. So it is still Whisper Soft with half a mile left to go, and he's two in front of Superpowers. But here is Pepper Jack Boudin, who has cut that lead from three lengths to a nose. Superpowers and Pepper Jack Boudin right together. Then comes Freedom to Dream. All Your Might is moving around in between horses, and All Your Might running very well. Then comes Make a Man, Room in Your Heart, Tiny Moments, and More Secrets. They're turning into the stretch, and Whisper Soft now has to fend off Pepper Jack Boudin, Freedom to Dream, and All Your Might. Superpowers is backing up fast. Then then comes Room in Your Heart. It is Whisper Soft who has led every step of the way. Pepper Jack Boudin trying to go by. Freedom to Dream. And All Your Might, the old man on the outside, is running very well. Whisper Soft on the rail. All Your Might and Freedom to Dream. Pepper Jack Boudin, All Your Might gets up and he's going to win over Whisper Soft. It is the 11 year old gelding, All Your Might, over Whisper Soft. Freedom to Dream, third. Pepper Jack Boudin, fourth. Superpowers was fifth. Room in Your Heart, sixth. Then more secrets.
the official winner of the Stewards Cup Turf Mile is all your might. He's a 11-year-old dark bay gelding by might out of word to the wise by star signs. This is his 11th win in 57 starts. He is owned by Sarah Julin and was bred by the steward. This is Sarah Julin's second Stewards Cup victory since she joined in 2008. So that's pretty epic. Oh no, next up is the ladies route. It's like a trillion miles long and there's 13 horses. Boo. Boo. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Number one is Marley's for Carl Smythe. This is the daughter of James Dean and Maple Leafs. Yes, she wants to win this race. She was fifth here last year. She has won two stakes since then. Six for 16 lifetime. Number two is Wona for Mary Whalen. This is a homebred daughter of Thunder Road. Coming off of a third place effort in the High Flyer. Ten for 20 lifetime. Number three is Warwick Street for Brianna McKenzie, and this filly is a daughter of James Dean. She's only a three-year-old. She's out of an awesome female family. Three for nine lifetime, but she is a million-dollar earner. She was second in the Louisville Oaks earlier this year. Number four is Sing Back Louder, who is probably your favorite here today. For Ash Terrison, this is a filly who's earned 1.7 million, 10 for 18 lifetime. She's won two in a row. She was second here last year. She wasn't going to win because she was in against Owl Let You Know. There's got to be one of these with her name on it, you would think. Number five, Save Me a Dance for Johanna Stick. Stick. Whatever. A $2 million purchase who's earned back $400,000, for 14 lifetime, coming off two straight wins, including one over boys. I might have made that up. Okay, anyway. Um, this filly was a grade two winner earlier this year, so she was a dual grade two winner this year, and she's by Kilgrave. Number six is Lane's End for Louise Bayou, coming off of two straight confidence-building allowance victories. This is a daughter of Dragonfly, which says long, out of Adored by Stay Inside, which says short, which means that she's confused. Five for 14 lifetime, her highest lifetime speed figure is a 98. Number seven, Missed Your Chance for Chris Bobby. I don't think this filly really wants to go this far. She's by Doctor, out of May Angels, lead you in. Five for nine lifetime. She is coming off a win, or a pair of wins, including both of them are grade ones, at a mile and a quarter. But this race is a mile and a half. Before that, she won a mile a uh, mile and eighth non-winners of three. Number eight is Hummingbird, and she is bred to go the distance. This is a daughter of James Dean out of Lauren. She is a two-time stakes winner coming into here, including the grade two Heartbreak Hill over a mile and a half, and then the Alana Stakes over two miles, five for eight lifetime. Uh, this filly is probably going to be a nice broodmare shortly after this. Number nine, Moments Pass for Steve Lovett, a $3 million purchase by this moment. Three for 12 lifetime has been on the in the top three 10 times. Earlier this year, she won the Miami Distaff, which is a grade three, and she won a confidence-boosting non winner two back in week four. Number 10, You Will Wake for Izzy Rafferty, a $5 million purchase by Conqueror out of an oncoming storm mare. Not sure she wants to go this far, but she's one of those horses that Izzy has like, I don't know, six or seven stakes freak quality fillies that are all the same age. And so she has to put them somewhere. And this horse is the one who ended up going long, even though I don't think that's what she wants to do. But she has a multiple graded stakes winner going long, but she has a grade one winner at a mile and three sixteenths. Number 11 is Happy Holiday for Danny Derby. This is a daughter of Happy This Way out of Jolly Holiday by Rambling. Only two for seven lifetime. This filly is a grade three winner over the boys earlier this year, but she's kind of supposed to be better than she is. This is that wish upon a star, let it go, all those horses, Blue Bayou. She's related to all those horses, and she hasn't really proven it yet. Number 12 is One More Kiss for Brian Levitt. This is his special filly by James Dean out of Eskimo Kiss. Three for eight lifetime, never worse than third. She has earned $1.3, $1.1 million dollars. Third in the Louisville Oaks, um, she tried the boys earlier this year and missed by a length and some in the Sunshine Park Derby. She was second in the Stewards Cup last year. Can she get it done today? Rounding out the field is number 13, Gypsy Avenger for Pete Vela. This is a daughter of Conqueror who cost $3.5 million. She is 
five for nine lifetime with four second place finishes. I do not believe she has tried older horses yet. Uh, she defeated Warwick Street going a mile and a quarter last out. The race before that, Warwick Street defeated her both of those times by a neck. So she and Warwick Street are basically the same animal. And that is your field for the Stewards Cup Ladies route. And post time's in two minutes. For 20,000 game points, this race, the ladies' route, has been won twice by horses scoring over nine lengths. Their victory was nine lengths. Who are the two horses who won this race by nine lengths? Weirdly enough, they came two years apart from each other. Allie Hedgestone with Thornbird and Clearly Best. <laughs> Poor Brian Levitt is going to have a meltdown. It is post time for the ladies' route. The betting pool closes at $15,000. A field of 13 is set to go a mile and a half. They're off. One more kiss was steady at the start, as was Sing Back Louder. But the rest were away well, and it is Wona from the inside who goes out to lead them. Then comes Warwick Street and Marley's. The three horses on the inside are the three leaders. One more kiss from all the way on the outside is moved over to be fourth. Then comes You Will Wake, Hummingbird, and Lane's End. Then Missed Your Chance, Sing Back Louder. Gypsy Avenger, Moments Past, Save Me a Dance, and Happy Holiday is the trailer. So it is Wona who leads them down the stretch the first time. She's two and a half lengths clear of Warwick Street second, and Marley's takes up third. Three lengths back to You Will Wake fourth. One more kiss loses a spot. She's fifth now. Four lengths to Hummingbird. The field is stringing out. A length back to Lane's End. Then comes Miss Your Chance. Sing Back Louder. Gypsy v Avenger. Moments Pass. Happy Holiday. And Save Me a Dance as the trailer. 12 fillies in a parade line. It is Wona. Then comes Warwick Street and Marley's and three back to You Will Wake. One more kiss. Hummingbird. Lane's End. Missed Your Chance. Sing Back Louder. Gypsy Avenger. Moments Pass. Happy Holiday. And Save Me a Dance is still the trailer. And they've got less than five furlongs left to run. Wona still leads by three lengths. We have a new horse in second and that is One More Kiss who has threaded her way through. Warwick Street drops back. Marley's is done. Here comes the closers. You Will Wake. Gypsy Avenger and Sing back louder, moments pass and hummingbird. So they turn into the top of the stretch, and Wona is still your leader. One more kiss, though, on her outside, and one more kiss takes over. You will wake Warwick Street, Gypsy Avenger, and sing back louder. Moments pass and hummingbird. It is one more kiss, and she leads by two. Gypsy Avenger is the one chasing her. Sing back louder is third. You will wake fourth. Then comes Wona, but one more kiss in a dominant display here today. She's trotting to the wire. One more kiss your winner. Gypsy Avenger second, Sing Back Louder third over You Will Wake, and Wono is fifth. The official winner is One More Kiss. She's a three-year-old Bay Philly by James Dean out of Eskimo Kiss by Our Lines Real. She is owned by some guy. 
She is owned by Brian Levitt and was bred by the store. This is her fourth win in nine starts. And her companion cat is named Snuggles. Snuggles, I tell you. That's pretty great. Next up is the marathon. Can we skip it? This is the the 32nd running of the marathon. There's actually been some really cool horses to win this race. Like Redmane, who won last year in an upset, is one of the best hypoing young sires around. Who doesn't remember Brake Bills crushing this race by eight lengths. And of course, this is the race where we must pause to remember our dearly departed wonderful friend, Scott Island, who I missed a lot this week. Scott won this race four times with Worth the Effort, Sun and the Stars, Scorpio Races, and Center of Time. He's been gone like a year and a half, and I don't approve. Number one is Night Eyes for Cleopatra. This is a son of James Dean out of Bibliomania, who is a daughter of Marilyn Million, I think. Something like that. Seven for 15 lifetime. This filly's closing in on $800,000 in earnings. She has won Colt. Colt. We're doing Colts now. This Colt has won two in a row. Including a two-mile grade three last out. Number two is a seal for Rebecca Rose Hepburn. We've already seen one ancient gelding win today. A seal is an eight-year-old by Hold Above. 17 for 38 lifetime. This guy's coming off of one of the best speed figures of his career. Last out. Number three is Follow Your Fate for Mike Bryant. Now, Mike Bryant and I have been having fights about this horse his whole career. Mike was like, I love this horse. He's going to be the best horse I ever had. I don't know what Mike's voice sounds like. I'm just making it up. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to win the Triple Crown with him and the Stewards Cup Classic. It's going to be awesome. Okay, well, clearly none of that happened. This horse did not win a Triple Crown race. And last year, he was second in the Stewards Cup Classic behind Castles Crumble, who is not even back this year. And Mike decided that his best chance at winning a Stewards Cup race was the marathon and I was like but this horse doesn't want to be a marathoner although I don't know that that's technically true like he actually has a lot of marathon in his pedigree I just really wanted him to win the classic this guy has already earned 5.9 million dollars so there's not really much else that we can ask of him but he has won three stakes in a row including two grade one races one of them over two miles so maybe this is his race. Number four, Fixed Bayonet for Tamara Estes. This is a son of James Dean. Eight for 21 lifetime. This guy is a freak level galloper who won a $45,000 claiming race last out. Number five is the horse named after Scott. So it would be pretty fantastic if he would win this. And that is Mr. Awesome. Danny Derby homebred by Circle of Life, which means marathon, out of Paint the Night, which means marathon. Seven for 14 lifetime. This guy's earned a million dollars. He has won two races this year, including the Scott Island Memorial Desert Marathon, grade one. Uh, he won the Exet Stakes after that. He was third and fifth in his last two preps, but let's see if he cannot pull off a Stewards Cup miracle or whatever. Number six, Truth Will Out for Pete Vela. This is a son of Sherwood who costs $4.5 million. He's not going to earn that back. He's only at 600000 right now. Um, he has not won in the last two years, but he is a marathoner, so why not be here? Number seven is Soldier for Eric Nalbone, and I love, love, love this horse as a stallion prospect. He's by Man of Mystery. He's out of a Just Victory mare who, who's, like, really well-bred. Um, this horse missed most of his career. He's a six-year-old with only 15 lifetime starts. He's kind of in a Hail Mary here because he needs to go over that $350,000 mark. It hasn't happened yet. We're kind of assuming it's going to happen here today so that he can go be a stallion and you can breed to him because he's going to be fancy. He won four in a row this year and was second last out a nose to chaos theory who's not in this race. 
So it could be Soldier's Day. Number eight, You Make Me Better for M.E.K. 11 for 24 Lifetime. This is a six-year-old son of Brilliantly. Holy smokes, how does Brilliantly have six-year-olds? Because I remember sitting right where I am calling him winning the Stewart's Cup Classic. Next up is one of the coolest horses in the sim, in my opinion, and that is Into the Fire for Izzy Rafferty, a $3.5 million purchase who's actually earned back $1.9. This is an intact eight-year-old, not a gelding, by Crusader out of a kind of subpar Awake As I Am mare. 19 for 38 lifetime, eight second places, five third places. Um, this guy has been running like... 88, 89, 91, 90. He's won like all these races, very well placed in his races. He lost a grade one last out by a length. Before that, he'd won four in a row. He's just really cool. And he likes this distance. And also that would be cool. Okay. Starting to sound a little bit like an idiot. Number 10 is Night Before Christmas. She is here because Carl Smythe had Marley's in the other race. But this race is two miles, and this is a daughter of Heart of the Storm. She is out of Maryland Million. She's coming off of a two-mile victory in the Adoration Stakes, but that was on a sloppy track. 11 for 21 lifetime. She's earned $1.8 million. I'm pretty sure she's going to be a fancy broodmare, so I don't really know why she didn't retire last year. Number 11 is Sheru, who was fifth in this race as the favorite last year to stablemate Red Main. Um, he has actually not won since then. He was a grade one winner last year. He's won 10 of 27 lifetime. He's been on the board in 21. $2.4 million earner by Keyboard Courage. He will retire after tonight. Number 12 in rounding out the field is Rage of the Storm for Steve Levitt. Wouldn't it be cool if the two Levitts won the marathon races back to back? I think that'd be really cool. This is another Heart of the Storm, so distance questions here. Five for 14 lifetime. Um, this guy won uh, the Born the Best Stakes on a mile and an eighth, week five. And that is your field for the marathon. And let me take one breath and then we'll call it. It is post time for the marathon. Can we just jump in with like a mile left to go? Would that be okay with everybody? Please? Yes? You agree? Okay, well let me tell you what happened to the start. They're off in the marathon. Soldier went to his knees. Everyone else was away well. With one mile left to go in the marathon. And it is Mr. Awesome who is leading by a length over night before Christmas. She is ahead in front of Fixed Bayonet and then comes into the fire. Another length back to follow your fate. Then you make me better. Soldier, a seal, rage of the storm, night eyes, Sheru, and three lengths back to truth will out. So it is Mr. Awesome who was trading the lead with Night Before Christmas the whole way, but now she drops back and Mr. Awesome is clear by a length. Here comes Follow Your Fate who moves up into third. Fix Bayonet is second. Night Before Christmas is now fourth. Soldier into the fire. You make me better in a seal. Then Night Eyes, Sheru, Rage of the Storm, and Truth Will Out. They have less than five furlongs left to go and it is Mr. Awesome who's been leading. Follow Your Fate is up into second and closing in on that one. Then comes Fix Bayonet who's running the race of his life night before Christmas still there but soldier passes that one now and soldiers coming on into the fire is running strongly and you make me better they turn into the lane and Mr. Awesome is done swallowed up by soldier follow your fate and night eyes Sheru coming on a night before Christmas it is follow your fate the leader he's a length clear soldier is in second night eyes chasing him and Mr. Awesome then Sheru follow your fate though he's gonna get a stewards cup and follow your fate is a length and some clear at the wire over Soldier, Night Eyes second, uh, third, Mr. Awesome fourth, then Sheru in Night Before Christmas.
The official winner is Follow Your Fate. He's a six-year-old black horse by Keep Your Promise Out of Chapel by War Daddy. He was bred by the steward and is owned by Mike Bryant. This is his 17th victory in 31 starts, and he is definitely retiring because, yeah, that's been kind of a long time coming, I think. Because he's like a thousand. And his companion goat is named Daddy-O, which is funny. Three races left to go, which is sad because I thought we had two. We are seven minutes away from post time for the distaff, and we have a field of 10 here because, of course, we do. Number one is enough for John Exet. This is last year's second place runner by a nose, and since then, she has been unbeaten for Exet. She has won two grade one races, both at a mile and an eighth. This is a daughter of Happy This Way, and this could be your favorite in this race. Number two is Kool Aid Pickles for Mike Springer, this awesome named Philly by Don. Dynamite is four for seven lifetime coming off of a second place finish in the Michigan Oaks behind a big B. This filly won two in a row, including the Toronto City Stakes. Last year, she was fourth in the Stewards Cup Juvenile Phillies. Number three, You Make Me Happy for Mike Eaton, another daughter of Happy This Way. She is eight for nine lifetime. But here's the interesting thing about her. The only time she faced what you kind of want to call it real competition, was the Stewards Cup last year, and she finished ninth. Then she came back this year. She skipped the Louisville Oaks. She ran Baltimore, and she won that, but that wasn't the same field as the Louisville one. The one race that I think she did really, really well in was the Saratoga Oaks, and that was when she defeated Bedtime by a half length, and that was two back. Number four, As Long As I Live for Susie Rydell. This is a $12 million purchase by Be Prepared out of Just One Kiss. She's won half of her 12 lifetime starts. She's been third in her last two races, including last year's Stewards Cup Distaff, where she lost by two noses. Number five is Just Kiss Me, and this is another Just One Kiss. This is the one year younger. Pete Vela owns this one, a daughter of James Dean. Seven for 16 lifetime. She is a millionaire. And... Uh, this year, she has been second in three straight races, including two grade ones. But before that, she won the grade two everything right stakes. You guys don't remember everything right, but she was like really cool. She was. I remember her like she was real. Number six is Topaz for Izzy Rafferty. And this is one of those horses I'm talking about. This horse is definitely not going to route. So what's Izzy going to do? She runs this one here because this is where this one belongs. This is a daughter of Heart of the Storm, a storm out of Ricochets, eight for 14 lifetime, a millionaire coming off of a third place finish in the rags to riches. She has not won since week three of this year, but last year she was on a tear. She won four grade graded stakes last year, including two great three great ones like the baltimore oaks and the wish upon a star and all those things so that's topaz number seven alone in the light for jennifer blake this is another daughter of happy this way oh my gosh there's like 15 of them in here why are they all happy this ways nine for 19 lifetime this is a 1.4 million dollar purchase um she is always knocking on the door for a really big one second in the midsummer oaks last year she was fifth against the boys in the pegasus classic uh she was a winner in the faith unwavering stakes which is over never say never earlier this year never say never is not in here tonight but i want to say she is a winner tonight that might have been monday Hard to know. Coming off of a grade one win and a Loki reflection. Number eight is Good Night. Good Night was your winner of the Stewards Cup Juvenile Phillies last year for Laura Ferguson. Since then, she was fifth in the Louisville Oaks. She briefly tried the Kentucky Derby Trail and was second ahead to Merlin in the Kentucky Blue. She did beat the boys in the Silver Valor Stakes and then defeated Older Mares in the Manistique. And she's by Happy This Way because they're all by Happy This Way. Two more horses left in the field, and number nine is Spoonful of Sugar Makes the Coughing Go Down. I know that's not how it goes. I should say the hiccups. Do you know that works? It's disgusting. But if you have the hiccups and you swallow a spoonful of sugar, you don't anymore. You're also a pound heavier and won't choke. But you don't have hiccups. This is the three year old daughter of Alan C. out of Wish Upon a Star for Danny Derby. This family won the Stewards Cup Juvenile Phillies yesterday with Red Rose. Four for eight lifetime. Uh, this filly is kind of a slacker in that if you're an Alan C. out of Wish Upon a Star and you've only earned $250,000, you are probably lame or something. But she is a two time grade two winner. Rounding out the field, number 10 is Bedtime, and this is your Louisville Oaks winner this year. She defeated Warwick Street and one more kiss in that race. As you know, one more kiss won 
like two races ago in the Stewards Cup. This filly is coming off a victory in the Kentucky Crown Distaff. She actually lost by a half length to You Make Me Happy to back, and that is the field, and that is the Distaff, and I'm going to type a contest question, and then we're going to call it. So Brian Levitt, win, Levitt wins 20,000 game points for guessing correctly that John Exet has won this race eight times. So he'll be going for his ninth distaff victory today. That's just over the top. As I said about Brianna and Xander, like, he should just share. One minute to post for the distaff, which is probably the third most important race of the night. And then next up, we have the turf with Deputy Governor. And the crowd goes, no. And the Emily goes, yay. And then we have the classic. And then I'm going to end game. <laughs> Peace. My throat hurts. Wine, wine, wine. Don't forget, we're going to do the drawing for Slick Rock. That's probably to myself, because I'm pretty sure that as soon as it's over, I'm going to be like, goodbye, and close everything. The betting pool for the distaff closes at $9,000, and the field of 10 is set. They're off. It was a perfect start. Bedtime from the outside wants the lead, and she cuts across the field to take over. Then comes Topaz from the middle, enough from the rail, and she's rushed up. Then comes Just Kiss Me, As Long As I Live in Good Night. Then comes You Make Me Happy, Alone in the Light, Kool-Aid Pickles, and Spoonful of Sugar is Last. They are under the wire and into the first turn, and it is bedtime, dictating the pace by a length over Topaz, another length back to enough, then comes Just Kiss Me, As Long As I Live in Good Night, You Make Me Happy, Kool-Aid Pickles, Alone in the Light, and Spoonful of Sugar is your trailer. So it is bedtime, and she's opened up three lengths on the field over Topaz, who sits second with enough right alongside. Then comes Just Kiss Me and another length back to As Long As I Live. Good night, then three back to You Make Me Happy. She would have to make up about seven lengths to win this one. Alone in the Light, another three back to Kool-Aid Pickles, and Spoonful of Sugar is still your trailer as they come to the half-mile pole. And bedtime, but her lead is down to two. Topaz is cutting into that lead, as is Just Kiss Me. Enough is dropping back. Enough not looking Looking good today. You make me happy up into fourth, then alone in the light. Good night. And as long as I live and as they turn into the stretch, bedtime has hit a wall and bedtime is spitting the bit. Here come the closers. It's you make me happy. Just kiss me. Topaz alone in the light. Kool-Aid pickles. Good night there too. It is you make me happy who takes over. Just kiss me fighting her alone in the light and bedtime is fourth. It is you make me happy. Just kiss me and alone in the light and you make me happy. Very good today. She wins by a half over just kiss me. You make me happy as your winner. Alone in the light third. Bedtime fourth. Good night. Kool-Aid pickles, topaz, and enough.
The official winner is You Make Me Happy. This is a homebred three-year-old daughter of of Mike Eaton of Happy This Way out of Tight Little Skirt by James Dean. She is a homebred for Mike Eaton, and this is her ninth win in 10 starts. Good job. You make me happy. Do you, though? Do you really? I suspect most of the horses in this race are going to retire. Even some of the three-year-olds. How bad did Enough run? She ran huge all year. And then she finished behind like everybody. Horses are weird. Next up is the turf. A $4 million race over a mile and a half. We have a field of 13, which is, of course, headlined by two-time ARC winner, Deputy Governor. The horse that has beaten him a couple times is in this race. What's going to happen today? Let's find out. Number one is Obsidian Fury. He is a store bred owned by Cleopatra, who costs $4.7 million, and he won the Storage Cup Bunbury last year. He was kind of annoying at the beginning of this year because he was running too short. He's a ton of time limit, and he has won two mile-and-a-half races in a row. Number two is Brilliance for Kane Saracen. This is a $4.8 million purchase by Sydney. I love, love this horse. I love him, and I can't wait to breed to him. And Kane's going to say to me in like three years, he's going to say, are you going to breed to him? And I'm going to go, duh. This guy has won three in a row, including all three grade one races, including one over older horses. He is already a millionaire, six for eight lifetime. Number three, Kiss Me One More Time. This is a three-year-old filly by Sydney for Michael Larson. She is not in the filly and mare turf, obviously, because we already did that one. Um, she was second last out in the Flower Pot Handicap, defeated other filly fillies in the Lucrezia Borgia, the one before that. And last year was eighth in the Stewards Cup Bun Barrette. Number four is Greatest Showman. And if Greatest Showman wins, I promise to sing for you because... <laughs> you know you want it. This guy has never been worse than third. Six for nine lifetime. He was third in the Stewards Cup Bunbury last year. Since then, he won five in a row, including Louisville Bunbury, London Derby, Irish Derby. He went into the arc as a great threat to Deputy Governor, and he finished second, beaten a half length. Looking for revenge today. Number five is Deputy Governor. Vincent Barrett bred this guy, and Izzy Rafferty is your owner. This is the four-year-old son of Katessin Black. 13 for 15 lifetime, 9.4 million dollars earned. Um, he did lose the Desert Turf Classic earlier this year. That was by a nose to, like, Diamonds like diamonds is in this race today um he kind of runs like a weird schedule i know izzy's listening and she's gonna be like stop being mean to me but like when you have this horse you could run in all those australian races you could run in all of the big english races i don't know he ran in a grade three in germany and then a french listed race it worked because he won the arc again but like does she need to be doing that i don't know his place in history will be debated for all time, as was Sydney's. Number six is get what you get and you don't get upset. That's the end of that phrase. Seven for ten lifetime with three second place finishes. This guy has actually won six in a row for Lucas Davenport. He's a three-year-old son of Kaiju. He uh, won the Oceanside Derby two starts back. He won a grade one in Chile four starts back. And he has already won twice over this mile and a half distance. Number seven is Antares for Brian Levitt, trying to make it two on the evening. This is the four-year-old son of Two-Toned. Eight for 15 lifetime, already a $3.3 .3 million earner because this guy was third in the Stewards Cup last year and then second by a length in the Pegasus Turf behind deputy governor since then he won the arcadia marathon and the grand premio carlos pellegrini which is a very rich race second in the king george and third in the arc number eight is sunday heartbreak who won this race two years ago last year he was sixth in this event he has a new owner now and that is lucas davenport i sent lucas a message earlier today and i said hey can you get heartbreak a headshot and lucas replied something to the tune of who is heartbreak <laughs> So he does have a headshot on order now. $4.2 million earner off of a only $1.6 million purchase. This guy is always right there. Second, third, second, third. He will aim to uh, 
win this race again. Number nine is start over again. Another Lucas Davenport. This is a four-year-old son of Imperative. Seven for 18 lifetime, a $600,000 earner. He has been defeated by Deputy Governor. Um, he has been defeated by a court, by Shine Bright. Um, he has not won a... Oh, he did. He did. He won a grade one race a year ago. So clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. He did win a grade one race. That was the Oceanside Derby. Number 10, Talk Like Before for Phil Hoflick. $1.6 million purchase. He is a five-year-old son of Suzuka Silence, nine for 21 lifetime. Uh, he won three straight graded races earlier this year, coming off of a second place effort behind Obsidian Fury. Number 11 is Hans Zimmer for Regina Haggart. $2 million purchase. He is eight for nine lifetime. Um, he's actually, he took that... Uh, South Africa route. He won the South African Derby and the Cape Town Derby and then the NG and St. Ledger. And then he ran the Arc and he finished 13th because horses are annoying like that. Number 12 is the Giant Killer and that is Like Diamonds for Glenn Larson. A $1.1 million son of Satona Crown. He has earned back $5.4 million. Nine for 17 lifetime. Fourth in the Arc but before that he won the King George. Um, he won the Desert Turf Classic by a nose earlier this year over Deputy Governor and then um, he defeated him some other time that is not showing up on the schedule. It was like years ago and that is Like Diamonds. Rounding out the field is number 13 World of Fire for Jack Meyer a $1.9 million son of Epiphania, a uh, $600,000 purchase, four for 14 lifetime, second last out to It's No Secret, and before that was a stakes winner in Trinidad. That is your field for the turf. Please get your bets in. $8,000 is not going to do it for me. You got to do better. I refuse to call it. I will hold the race as hostage. Do you want to breed your horses or not? Colossal, we come, these renegades in the ring. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm warming up. It is post time for the Stewards Cup turf. $37,500 in the pool. Thank you. I'm so glad to know that threats work amongst you people. <laughs> this is a field of 13 set to go a mile and a half for four million dollars these are some good ones so let's do it they're off in the stewards cup turf and deputy governor was one step slow deputy governor missed the break Brilliance goes out to the lead, then comes in. Terrace, kiss me one more time, the filly, and here's Deputy Governor pulling his way up between horses, and Deputy Governor takes over. World of Fire tucks back, then comes Obsidian Fury from the rail. Sunday Heartbreak, Greatest Showman, start over again, like diamonds, talk like before. Hans Zimmer, and get what you get is the early trailer. So it is Deputy Governor leading by a length over Brilliance, then comes in Terrace. Kiss me one more time, the Philly and World of Fire. The pace is fast, Obsidian Fury 6, then comes Sunday Heartbreak, Greatest Showman, start over again, like diamonds, talk like before. Hans Zimmer and get what you get is last as they go past the wire the first time with one mile left to go. It is Deputy Governor and he's now dueling with Antares. Antares does not like the pace and he's gotten quite closer. Brilliance joins them alongside and they're three across the track, three back to kiss me one more time. Then comes World of Fire 5th, Greatest Showman up in the 6th over obsidian fury sunday heartbreak uh, the winner two years ago then start over again like diamonds is up 10th then doc talk like before han zimmer and get what you get is still the trailer so we still have this three horse duel deputy governor and terrius and brilliance three lengths back to kiss me one more time then comes world of fire greatest showman passes that one now obsidian fury and sunday heartbreak start over again like diamonds talk like before and they've passed the half mile pole deputy governor led almost every step of the way and he's still a neck in front of brilliance and terrius is the first to crack here's greatest showman up third now obsidian fury and sunday heartbreak like diamonds is threading his way through the field he's seventh now sixth and they turn in the 
stretch deputy governor has tri to try and hold on. Greatest showman is the one breathing down his neck. Brilliant, still right there in Obsidian Fury. Here's Like Diamonds down the center of the track. And Like Diamonds is cruising past them all. Deputy governor fighting back. Greatest showman and brilliance. But it is Like Diamonds who collars them and pulls away. Like Diamonds is going to win the turf by a length. Greatest showman over deputy governor, second and third. Then Brilliant, Obsidian Fury, and Terry and Sunday Heartbreak. The official winner is Like Diamonds. He's a four-year-old black colt by Satono Crown out of Witches Familiar by Atoko. He is owned by Glenn Larson and was bred by the Steward. This is his 10th win in 18 starts. I don't know if he's retiring. Is Glenn in here? Glenn, tell us the plan because Deputy Governor is not retiring. He is coming back for you next year. He does not like losing. He's going to try and win three arcs. I made that up. I have no idea what his schedule is, but that would be dope. <laughs> Six minutes to post before the Stewards Cup Classic. Is Glenn in here? Is Glenn going to answer me? Okay, Stewards Cup Classic. This is the last big one on the year. We have 11 horses in here. They're very, very good. This is a fantastic edition of the classic. Number one, Avada Kedavra, homebred for Nina Olsen. This is last year's Long Island Classic winner. Since then, he has won the Metropolitan Handicap and the Spa Distance Handicap in his last two starts. I kind of thought he might go in the marathon, but why go in the marathon when you can go here? He was seventh here in this race last year. Number two is this year's Louisville Derby and Long Island Classic winner, The King. This is the Rebecca Rose Hepburn homebred by Iron Spirit. Seven for nine lifetime. This guy is coming off of a victory in the Summer Bird Stakes over older horses. That was with a 93 speed figure. Number three is Ketchikan. Danny Derby and I have fights over this horse all the time because he's an after the disco and all the after the discos want a mile and a quarter and Danny's like well he doesn't want a mile and a quarter and I'm like well but he probably does and he was like well I ran him a mile and a quarter twice in his whole life and he lost and I was like yeah but that was the Louisville Derby and the Desert World Cup like what are you gonna do he's not gonna win those if he's not good enough you have to run him at a mile and a quarter lots and he doesn't so here he is at a mile and a quarter time for me to prove myself this guy's been second in his last two races both over a mile and an eighth Number four is one of the best horses you've never heard of, and that is Bregman for Louise Bayou. This is a homebred son of, what did I just say, after the disco. Eight for 15 lifetime, he's closing in on a million in earnings, coming off of a victory in the Coyote Lakes handicap. Kind of like uh, what the last one I just said, I thought he might go in the marathon like uh, Avada Kedavra, just because that was a mile and a half. But before that, he was second by a neck in the American f maturity. He is one at a mile and a quarter in a grade two earlier this year. Um... Last year, he won the Canadian Fraternity and the Prince of Peace. He was sixth in the Louisville Derby. Number five, Hurricane Storm for Regina Moore. This is a $7 million purchase that she probably wants to punch in the face. This is the brother to Heart of the Storm out of Circle of, by Circle of Life. Eight for 17 lifetime, five second place finishes. He is riding a two race winning streak, including the tremendous stakes over a mile and a half. Another one that I thought was going to go in the marathon, but he's here and I'm happy to have him because the more the merrier. Number six, Phoenix Argyle for Danny Derby. This guy won the Midsummer Classic last year. This year he has won two stakes races, including the grade two Brilliance Finds a Way, and he's coming off of a listed win in the Burrow Stakes over a mile and a quarter. He was third behind Fancy Shoes and Mr. White Sox. Oh my gosh, I never realized that shoes and socks were in the same race. Oh my god, can we all just pause and say, ah? Uh, yeah, he was third in that race. Why is Chaos Theory not in here? Chaos Theory won all these big races this year. Where is he? 
who's in charge. Number seven is Hear You Me making his final start of his career for Pete Vela. This is a $2 million purchase who won the Desert World Cup earlier this year over Fancy Shoes. Um, he then lost to that horse in the Oceanside Classic, but he came back to defeat Castles Crumble in the Long Island Gold Cup. Castles Crumble won earlier today and is now retired, so breed to him. This guy has earned 6.5 million monies. Number eight is Fancy Shoes for Keith Maidlow, a son of Happy This Way, out of a Flames Mare. Eight for 16 lifetime. He has earned $4.2 million. He is your Louisville Derby winner from two years ago. He was sixth in this race last year. Since then, he won the Grade 1 Oceanside Classic with a 99. He was second in the Desert World Cup by a neck. I really like this guy. He's so cool, and I'm pretty sure he's running next year. Number nine is Giant for Cleopatra. Um, this is another one that almost ran in the marathon, and then now he's here. He did win a mile and a half last out. He was second in the Long Island Classic. He was fifth in the Baltimore Crown. He was seventh in the Louisville Derby. But before that, he'd won all of his prep races. Five for ten lifetime with the highest lifetime speed figure of a 99. Number 10 is Mr. White Sox for Jack Meyer. I think he's retiring after this race. This is the son of After the Disco out of Skyfall. Nine for 21 lifetime. He's earned 4.4 million. He was second in that Oceanside Classic. He won the American Maturity over Breg Bregman. My voice is starting to go. He was fourth in this race last year, and he won last year's Arcadia Million. This year, he lost by a nose to your marathon winner. Follow your fate. Rounding out the field is number 11, Thanos. This is your Midnight, <laughs> midnight Classic, Midsummer Classic winner. Thanos won by a neck. It'd be funnier if he won by a head. And if you'd seen the movie. 5 for 10 lifetime for this Danny Derby homebred, a son of Happy This Way. He is a $1.3 million earner, highest lifetime speed figure. Is a 99. He was 7th in the Stewards Cup last year, 2nd in the Louisville Derby. That is your field for the Classic. Get your bets in because it's going to be a big one. Post time in one minute. It is post time for the final race of the year, and that is the Stewards Cup Classic. The betting pool is only $21,000 because you all are the worst. I mean that with love. Send more game points. <laughs> Don't forget, you have two weeks to breed your mares. They are due in 13 and a half days. And send me any mares back that I get because I kind of miss breeding mares, actually. The field is set. A field of 11 is in the gate to go a mile and a quarter for $6 million. They're off. Here you me stumbled at the start. Bregman goes out to the lead and no one wants to go with him early. Here's the king who settles in second and then giant from the outside. Catch a can and Nevada Cadaver on the rail, then fancy shoes. Phoenix Argyle, here you me after the bad break, Hurricane Storm, Thanos, and Mr. White Sox is the early trailer. So it is Bregman who leads them by a length over the king. Then comes giant and catch a can. Two lengths back to Nevada Cadaver with fancy shoes alongside. Another length to Phoenix Argyle. Then comes here you me. Two back to Hurricane Storm, Thanos, and Mr. White Sox at the back of the pack but only seven lengths front to back and it is Bregman and now Giant is forcing the issue and Giant has moved up those two are heads apart the King is now in between them and the King is two lengths clear of catch a can so we have another three horse duel on the front end Avada Kedavra is fifth then comes Fancy Shoes here you me and Phoenix Argyle Hurricane Storm Thanos and Mr. White Sox is still the early trailer 
Five furlongs left to run, and it is still Bregman, then Giant and the King, those three across the track. Catch a can two lengths back, Avada Kedavra, Fancy Shoes, Here You Me, Phoenix Argyle, Hurricane Storm, Thanos, and Mr. White Sox, and now they have three to run, with Bregman still leading every step of the way, with Giant pushing him, and the King is going to be the first to crack. He's trying to go with them, but they're getting away. Here's Fancy Shoes up third now, Catch a can Phoenix Argyle, Here You Me, Mr. White Sox coming from the back of the pack, Thanos not doing enough. And they've got 3 16ths to go. Bregman and Giant, and they've been there the whole way. Fancy Shoes and the King. Mr. White Sox fifth, then Catch a Can and Phoenix Argyle. But it is Bregman, and he's trying to cause a major upset. Giant on his outside would be no better. Fancy Shoes, the King, and Mr. White Sox. But it is Bregman who led them every step of the way, and he wins by a neck in the Stewards Cup Classic over Giant, Fancy Shoes, the King, Mr. White Sox, and Catch a Can. The official winner of the 52nd Stewards Cup Classic is Bregman. He's a four-year-old dark bay colt by After the Disco out of promises kept by Be Prepared. He is a homebred for Louise Bayou, and this is his ninth win in 16 starts. And he now goes from just under a million to like three million in earnings. Maybe more. Also, he's real cute. Now, is he going to retire or will he come back next year? All right, it is almost time for the raffle to see who wins Slick Rock. And while we're computing that, I'm going to go get my shoes on because, <laughs> let's get real, I got a movie to watch. Okay, the entries for the raffle, these are the people who did best on the Thursday pick-all and the Friday pick-all, are Steve Levitt, Keith Maidlow, Gary Pratt, Teaku Downs, Mike Bryant, Sean Gallagher, and NP Racing. So, those are the people. I'm putting them in a randomizer right now, and I will get back to you momentarily. Okay, I put the horses in the, uh, the horses, <laughs> not that. I put the people in a randomizer and it spit out one name and the new owner of Slick Rock, the horse named after my real life horse, who kind of misses juvenile season, sorry about that, is Steve Levitt. Steve Levitt, you're the winner. Good job, Steve. I will send you this horse sometime when I remember. I'll do it now. Hold on. There you go. Congratulations, Steve. Congratulations, Rochelle, for winning the pick six. That's amazing. How did you do that? <laughs> that was a hard pick six. 
Wait, is Steve not here? Okay, well, tell him he has to listen to me singing his name. Brian, you tell him. Teach him how to go to the YouTube. All right, guys. It was a really nice night and a really nice year. It was. This was such a good year. With Rebecca Rose Hepburn winning two legs of the Triple Crown and Louise Bayou winning the Classic and Deputy Governor winning the Arc. All right, that was my favorite part. Yeah, there was a Canadian Triple Crown winner this year with Lazy Dog. Such a good year. But you know what? Next year is going to be even better! Whoa! I don't know how. But let's make it better, okay? All right, see you guys for the Pegasus in like a month. Bye, guys.